John Charles, CBE, was born in Swansea on 27 December 1931. He was a Welsh footballer who played as a centre-forward or as a centre-back. Best known for his first stint at Leeds United and Juventus, he was rated by many as the greatest all-round footballer ever to come from Britain. As a child he would play football with younger brother Mel Charles, who also went on to become a professional, later playing alongside each other for the Welsh national team. While still at school, he joined the boy section of the local team Swansea Town, who later became Swansea City. When he left school at the age of 14 he was taken onto the ground staff at Vetch Field, because of his young age, Swansea who were in the third division, never gave him a first team call-up. His only senior appearances came for the reserve side in the Welsh Football League. While playing for Gendros, a local youth club, he was scouted by Leeds United and given a trial in September 1948. At his trial he impressed and duly signed for them at the age of 17, relocating to Yorkshire. Then manager of Leeds United, Major Buckley, selected Charles in a variety of positions including right-back, centre-half and left-half for Leeds reserves. John made his first team debut as a centre-back for Leeds in a friendly versus Dumfries club Queen of the South on 19 April 1949. John Charles was tasked with marking the incumbent Scotland centre-forward Billy Houliston, who ten days previously at Wembley, had run the England defence ragged. Scots 1-3-1. The score at Elland Road 0-0. After the game, Houliston said 17-year-old Charles was the best centre-half I've ever played against. John Charles made his league debut against Blackburn Rovers also in April 1949, playing at centre-half. From 1950 until 1952, Charles was away on national service with the 12th Royal Lancers at Carlisle. The army allowed him to turn out for Leeds, but also saw to it that he played for them, and in 1952, Charles skippered his side to the Army Cup. It was during this period that he had operations to repair cartilages in both knees. After his return to the Leeds side in November 1951, Charles played at centre-forward and centre-half. This prompted a debate as to where Charles should play in the team, but he remained at centre-half until the 1952-53 season. In October 1952, he was switched to centre-forward and immediately started to score, with 11 goals in six games. In 1955, he was appointed club captain and during the 1955-56 season, Leeds won promotion to the first division. Charles was in sparkling form, scoring 29 goals in 42 appearances. In the following season, Charles scored a new club top flight record tally of 38 goals in 40 league appearances as Leeds secured an 8th place finish in the 1st division, before finally moving away from the club. His influence on Leeds' success during his final season was so strong, reporters nicknamed the club John Charles United. In total, he scored 150 league goals in eight years for Leeds, including a club record 42 goals in 39 appearances during the 1953-54 season. He remains the second highest all-time goal scorer for Leeds after Peter Lorimer. After returning from his national service in 1952, he began to be used more often as a forward, and he was the second division's top scorer in 1954. The following year, he was named club captain, in his first season as captain, he led the club to second place and promotion. Charles played for the Great Britain team against Ireland in 1955. In 1956-57 season he was the first division's top scorer and an eighth-place finish for Leeds was achieved. In August 1957, he joined the Italian club Juventus for a then-British record £65,000 transfer fee, almost doubling the previous record. His debut came on 8 September 1957 against Hellas Verona. Goals from giant Piero Boniperti and Omar Sivri had made the score 2 all, when up popped Charles to score the winner. The following week, he scored the only goal in the victory over Udinese, and he then hit the decisive strike in a 3-2 victory over Genoa. He had been the match winner in his first three games. In his first season in Italy, Charles was Serie A's top scorer with 28 goals, and was voted player of the season as Juventus won the Scudetto. He played in Turin for five years, scoring 108 goals in 155 matches, winning the Scudetto, Italian League Championship, 
three times, and the Coppa Italia twice. He placed third in the Ballon d'Or in 1959, the highest position for a Welsh footballer. His prolific partnership with Sivari and Boniperti in Juventus's front line earned the trio the nicknames the Holy Trident and the Magical Trio, Charles was also dubbed Giganti Buono, the Gentle Giant, during his five seasons with the club, due to his size and fair play. The respect Charles earned from Juventus fans was shown when, on the occasion of the club's centenary in 1997, they voted him the club's best-ever foreign player. Following his time at Juventus, Don Revai paid a club record £53,000 to secure the return of Charles to Yorkshire. As a result of the excitement this created, Leeds United raised admission prices for the start of the 1962-63 season. After 11 games Charles was sold for £70,000 to Roma. Charles scored within 15 minutes of his first game for Roma, in a match against Bologna. In his five seasons with the club, he won the Scudetto three times and the Coppa Italia twice. He was also the Capo Cannonier winner for the 1957-58 season Paola Rossi Award. John was also a good singer and in 1960 he appeared on an Italian television show and sang the song 16 Tons. 16 Tons. 16 Tons. Some people say a man is made out of mud. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and skin and bones. A man that's weak and the back of the strong. You load 16 ton. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I own my soul to the company store. I was born one morning and the sun didn't shine I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine I loaded 16 ton of number nine coal And the strong boss said, well bless my soul You load 16 ton, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go I to the company store If you see me coming better step aside A lot of men did and a lot of men died I'm the one fist of iron, the other of steel If the right one don't get you then the left one will You know, sixteen ton, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt Sing, Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go I owe my soul To the company store He moved back to his native Wales to play for Cardiff City and ended his career in non-league football in player-manager roles at Hereford United and Merthyr Tydfil and the Swansea City youth team, and technical director of the Canadian team Hamilton Steelers, who he became coach of midway through the 1987 season. He was never cautioned nor sent off during his entire career, owing to his philosophy of never kicking nor intentionally hurting opposing players. In 1998, he was included in the Football League 100 Legends, and in 2002, he was one of the inaugural inductees to the Football Hall of Fame. Charles first played for the Wales national team shortly after his 18th birthday. He represented the Welsh national team over 15 years, from 1950 to 1965. Alongside his brother, Mel Charles, he was a member of the Welsh squad at the 1958 FIFA World Cup. At the tournament, he scored in a one-all draw with Hungary, but he got injured in a playoff match against the same opposition. Ruled out of the quarter-final against Brazil, Wales lost the match 1-0, with Pele scoring the winner. Wales manager Jimmy Murphy said that had Charles been fit, Wales might have won the match. For its 50th anniversary in 2004, UEFA asked each of its then 52 member associations to nominate one player as the single most outstanding player of the period 1954 to 2003, and Charles was chosen as the Golden Player of Wales by its national association in November 2003. 
In 2004, John Charles was voted at number 19 in the 100 Welsh Heroes poll. In the foreword for Charles' autobiography, Sir Bobby Robson described him as incomparable and classed him among the all-time footballing greats such as Pele, Diego Maradona and George Best, saying incomparable. John wasn't only one of the greatest footballers who ever lived. He was one of the greatest men ever to play the game. He also noted that Charles is the only footballing great to be world-class in two very different positions. Gian Piero Boniperti, the captain of Juventus when Charles had joined the Biancaneri, spoke of the Welshman's nature as a person, I would say he was from another world because of his human qualities. John was one of the most loyal and honest people I have ever met, a very special person. He managed to keep the whole team united, and any quarrels or arguments quietened down as soon as he appeared on the pitch or in the dressing room. Jack Charlton said of his former teammate, John Charles was a team unto himself. People often say to me, who was the best player you ever saw, and I answer that it was probably Eusebio, Di Stefano, Cruyff, Pele or our Bob. But the most effective player I ever saw, the one that made the most difference to the performance of the whole team, was without question John Charles. Charles' sporting behavior led international referee Clive Thomas to say, if you had 22 players of John's caliber, there would be no need for referees, only timekeepers. On 7 March 2018, Charles had one of Great Western Railway's intercity trains named after him. In August 2019, a social housing complex named Close John Charles was opened on the site of a former primary school in Swansea. The John Charles Lounge in Aberystwyth Town's ground is named after Charles. The John Charles Centre for Sport in Leeds is named after Charles. The West Stand at Elland Road is named the John Charles Stand and the entrance lobby to the banqueting suite attached to the back of the stand contains a bust of Charles, in memory of all he did for the club. A street near Elland Road in the Lower Wortley area of Leeds is named John Charles Way. Following his retirement from football, Charles became the landlord of the new in public house on Elland Road, Cherwell, Leeds which later was also managed by another Leeds United player and Wales international, Byron Stevenson. On 16 June 2001, as part of that year's Queen's Birthday Honours, he was appointed a commander of the Order of the British Empire for services to association football. Until shortly before his death he continued to attend every Leeds United home game. In 2002, he was made a vice president of the Football Association of Wales, and in 2003, he was granted the freedom of the city of Swansea. There was a campaign to knight Charles, but it never came to fruition. In January 2004, he suffered a heart attack shortly before an interview for Italian television, and required the partial amputation of one foot for circulation reasons before he was returned to Britain. He died in Pinderfields Hospital, Wakefield, West Yorkshire, early on 21 February 2004. His widow, Glenda, bequeathed his ashes to the city of Swansea.